Hey, Jody here with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com. Today's video, we're doing a little stick welding uphill with 332 7018. It's an outside corner joint on quarter inch thick metal. That's roughly six millimeters thick metal, hot rolled steel. And initially, what I set out to do was just compare a single pass versus a two pass weld. Look at the differences, the cross sectional differences. You know, I like to cut and etch stuff. To I like to cut and etch and test and verify what I think I saw with what actually happened. And so that's what I did, but as I was going along, what really jumped out at me was the difference a fit up could make in that cross-sectional thickness. So we're gonna take a look at that too. All right, so vertical uphill, 7018, 332. Uh, one pass versus two pass, and then a whole lot more. Cut and etch along the way to look at the differences. Let's do it. I tacked these pieces up using a piece of aluminum angle, tried to get them exactly corner to corner with just a very hint of a gap so that I'd get full penetration or close to it all the way down into the bottom of that root. And so the first, the first weld here, what I attempted to do is make a single pass weld, just going along kind of slow, really holding those toes for what seems like a, a long time here. And what surprised me was just how choppy it was. The arc didn't really look that way, but it was super choppy with undercut. And I don't remember if I cleaned this or not, but I didn't clean it very well. And apparently I didn't hold the toes long enough. But it's just kind of hard to make an outside corner like this in this thickness and hold them long enough without it sagging. Now what you see here, that little straight line of overlap there, these pieces as the weld metal solidified and shrunk, it pulled them together and it made them overlap and walk over each other a little bit. And what jumps out at me is the difference that can make in the cross-sectional thickness. So this is quarter inch steel, 0.250. The weld actually measured 0.160. So now I'm gonna make two passes. Set up another joint, corner to corner. This first pass, I'm not doing anything special here. I'm just dragging it up with trying to keep a, a dead 90 degree angle on the electrode with a tight arc at 75 amps. Try to do most of this welding here today at 75 amps. So I cleaned the slag off of that one and came back with a second pass. And here I'm trying to just, just go wide enough so that the weld consumes that corner. And it looks to me like I'm kind of stepping out maybe a little bit too far each time but we'll see how it looks. That's a good sign, but I didn't really deserve it. it because look, I got a choppy, a choppy weld toe. And that's partly because I didn't clean the metal well enough and partly because I stepped out too far each time. Now you do see there the last inch or two of that weld, a little slag pushing through the backside. We'll cut that and etch it too and see what happened there. First we'll cut it roughly halfway through the joint or a third or so and do a little quick swab etch here. That's two passes, and actually that's not too horrible as far as a bead profile goes. You know, it got down pretty much into the corner even though there were, it's, there's a slight amount of overlap there. And if we measure the thickness here, we see I come up with 0.188, so that's getting in the ballpark. Still choppy though, but let's cut it, let's cut it uh, right here in this area that looks like it penetrated all the way through. Must have had a little gap there bigger than anywhere else. So we can see a small little inclusion of some kind, some kind of little defect there close to the root. But the metal did, the weld metal did penetrate all the way through. And if I measure the shortest point, the thinnest point on this, this cross section of the weldment, it's still 0 0.220, which is getting almost as thick as, as the metal here. For this next weld, I'm going to make sure that I have nice, clean, bright metal that I'm welding on to. So that if I do get undercut, I'll know it's something I'm doing rather than the mill scale. So you see, I have a little tiny gap in here, and I've cleaned this one up, and I'm going to try to make this one better. I'm going to actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld the first pass here at 75 amps, and then turn it down just a little bit to 70 amps for a second pass. Also going to go just a little bit slower on the first pass so that I don't have to carry much metal on the second and see what happens there. Doesn't look too good, but hopefully we'll, we'll make it look better on the second pass. So here I'm, I'm, I'm holding, the, holding those toes for about a half a second. And I'm weaving just, I'm going a little bit past the, the corners of the, of the piece here just to try, to try to see if that works in eliminating any 
choppiness or undercut. Not taking it really all that far past there, but farther than I would normally. Farther than I did on the previous one anyway. Like I say, this is 70 amps, the second pass here. All right, we're going to cut and etch this one, shine it up first and get a look at it and see if we did any better. And I'm getting better here. I am, I'll tell you what, I, I really discovered just how rusty I was at doing this particular this particular joint. I don't know if it was just stick welding or, or what the deal was, but I need some practice, definitely. But this is, you know, it's a good learning experience anyway. So we'll make that cut, do a little quick etch on that, see what we see. We still see that little bit of overlap in the bottom of that joint. Didn't quite get in there, but it's close. And the thickness, 0.19 compared to the thickness of the base metal. Now looking at that weld, you would think that's a pretty, that's a pretty good size weld, like maybe I almost over welded it. But again, when you look at the cross section, it doesn't really, doesn't really show that. Not that much weld there. A couple of things that jumped out at me from this week's video, things that I saw, you know, while I was editing the video. Number one is probably mill scale. You know, you can definitely burn through mill scale with a stick rod if you have, them, you know, your amperage within scope. You'll generally get a little bit better penetration if it's clean, clean, bright metal and less undercut. It's a lot easier to get undercut when you don't clean the mill scale off, especially on a vertical uphill weld. You know, a flat right in front of you, as uh, long as you keep that arc tight and jammed in there, a lot of times you won't have any undercut, even with mill scale. But when you get out of position, everything matters more. Number two is, number two, not one, but two. Number two is uh, fit up. You know, as I was welding along, apparently these things overlapped a little bit. And right where they overlap must have been where I cut them. Because you can see a little overlap, and that definitely affects the, the cross-sectional thickness of the weld when you don't have a corner-to-corner joint on an outside corner joint. So even though I tacked them up thinking I was dead corner to corner, I used a piece of uh, you know aluminum angle plate to get them like just about perfect and attack on each end. But as I was welding, things shrink and kind of walked over each other apparently and overlapped. And that, man, the cross section just shows how much that affects the thickness. So those are the two things that, that jumped out at me. There's a whole lot more we could talk about. We'll save that for another video. Hope you learned something. I know I did. <laughs> See you next time. Hey, just a quick reminder, I support these videos with my online store. It is at weldmonger.com. I would very much appreciate if you'd give it a visit.